The autumn leaves are falling. The garden's starting to look like it's going through its main transitional period. But, as promised, I have finally received, I say finally, they actually arrived the following day from ordering them. I'm going to quickly show you what I got from Purdy and also Le Chameau. As you may have seen in last week's video, Lydia and I went to the Royal Berkshire Shooting School and following the event, we did a little bit of shopping in the store that was on site. I found a few items that I really liked, but unfortunately they didn't have my sizes. So when I got home, I went online and I placed an order. I ended up finding a couple of pieces that weren't in the store and I changed my mind on one of the vests. So I thought I'd quickly open those with you. Super fast delivery. I ordered them and within 24 hours they were in my possession. So very impressed with that. The first item that I selected, this was one of the items that I didn't see in store. I saw one that was very similar. I almost brought the Berkshire Tweed and I actually ended up buying this, which is their latest fabric and they call this the Acrum. And so they actually have suede padded shoulders on them. So they are designed for basically when you're shooting, but I also think that they're very, very smart. So I would certainly wear this whilst we're out on dog walks or if Lydia and I were going to a country pub, this would also work well. So they have these large open pockets on them, which obviously would be used to potentially store cartridges and stuff. And then like I said, they've got this nice suede shoulder pads. And then on the right side, which is good for me because I'm right-handed, if I flip this around, you'll see inside They've got a nice thick piece of foam, I assume it is, just to sort of soften the impact of the gun. And then they finished it off with some brown horn buttons and this is actually a high collar. Unlike a lot of gilets that have a crew neck, this has got a slightly raised collar and I just think it was a really nice smart detail. We'll quickly try this on so I can show you. That's also very handy, little uh, inside pocket, both here and there, I like that. And here as well, three internal pockets, very nice. So I'd either style it up like this, or if I wanted to bring the collar down, I also think this looks very nice as well. It almost finishes it off like it's got lapels, which I quite like, I think it looks nice. So I could also wear it with the collar down. So if it was causing me any discomfort or getting in the way, if I was shooting or if I was just out having lunch and the collar was causing me any discomfort, I could flip the collars down and I just still think that it looks very smart. So this is my first ever sporting gilet that I've ever brought. I don't know if you can pick it up very clearly on the camera, but the tweed on this, it's like a herringbone. And as I mentioned, I think this is the latest fabric that Purdy have done. They do this in the field coat and probably some other accessories as well, like breeks and so forth. So very happy with this, fits absolutely perfectly. And on to the next and final item from Purdy. This is their Loden Double Faced Pico. And as you can see, it's in a color green. And again, it's got some brown horn buttons on it. Much like a field jacket, you have these chest height pockets. I'm not exactly sure what these are called, but this is definitely something that I believe would be taken more from a functional jacket style. And I'm not exactly sure where pea coats originated from. You see a lot of people in the city wearing pea coats, certainly navy ones. I'm sure that these probably date back to wartime as well, that serve a different function, but they're extremely comfortable, they're very thick, and I feel like pea coats are just a nice alternative to an overcoat because they're slightly shorter, which means for guys like me that are not particularly tall, it means that you don't completely lose your legs. If I just put this on for you quickly, I do need to have the sleeves on this taken up and possibly the waistline just slightly taken in as well. But as you can see, the shoulders fit very nicely. The Loden Pico from Purdy. And then last but not least, the Le Chameau Wellies. I purchased these because I absolutely love my Dewberries, but I have found that the ones that I have are really wide around my leg. And so when I wear them, I don't particularly feel very smart. And so they're perfect for dog walking because they're extremely comfortable. I've worn them in, they fit my feet. However, I don't feel they look very narrow on my legs. And so I decided to go for another pair of Wellingtons that can hopefully offer that. So a slightly more tailored or a slightly more fitted Wellington. I sound crazy saying this, but I understand what I mean and that's all that matters. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
And here we are, these are the Jameson Le Chameau Wellies. I really like the kind of brass detailing here where the logo is and also this buckle around the side. I don't actually think this is a functional buckle. There's no zip down the side of these. So I think that that's just a design element of the shoe. There's actually a little vent just at the back here on the welly. And this is just to help the feet breathe whilst they're in there. Over time, these will obviously age and distress and they'll build their real character. But I tried these on yesterday evening when they arrived and they fit perfectly. So I'm very happy with these. These are uh, probably gonna be Wellingtons that I wear less occasionally. I think if we're traveling, I'll take these, but on my day-to-day -day dog walks, I'll be wearing my Dubarries, and then I'll have these for occasions like when we went to the Royal Berkshire Shooting School, I would have wore these to that. So yeah, really happy with these. I think they look very smart. I'm not sure if these are a new release from Le Chameau or whether they've had this style for a while, but they look really, really nice. and. I believe they do this exact style as well for ladies, so you can get both male and female in this exact same design. Because I know often or not, a lot of brands, they'll do different designs depending whether it's for the female or male audience. So it's quite nice that you can get this exact design in both. It's not looking too bright out there today. It's been raining on and off all day. However, over the weekend and today, I really need to try and do as much as I can to tidy up and clear out everything in my shed the greenhouse and in the loft because when the guys come to replace the shed they're going to move the existing shed and then they're going to put the new one in its place so i just want to get rid of all of the stuff that's not really needed because it just means that there's going to be more stuff to move around and we need to do the job anyway so i want to try and get that done a whilst there's a skip on the drive and b before the guys get onto it lydia also wants to get onto her greenhouse so that's ready for overwintering and also I think that she has some content that she wants to film in there as well. That has been a little bit neglected during the works because it's just been so muddy going out there. So we've kind of just abandoned the kitchen garden for the time being. And again, the loft, which is less important, but there are lots of things up there that we were just discussing getting down and just seeing if any of our friends or family want them. Just like spare lampshades and lights and spare rugs and stuff like that. So it's just a job that needs doing. And if there's anything up there that's old or not needed anymore then again that can go in the skip if it's rubbish and if not hopefully it will be rehomed. Lumi's just jumped into the box. What is it with cats and boxes? Somebody tell me why do cats love getting in boxes so much? They make you feel comfortable. Happy cat. You, I've just fed you. That means you want to cuddle. Should we have a cuddle? Me and you. Is it the box or is it my lap? What's your preference? Is it the box? Oh, happy cat. Making a bed. Just as a little surprise for Lydia when she gets home, I've stacked up the pizza oven with the wood. She's been asking me to do it since they installed it. They just weren't quite ready because they still need to seal the paving and everything, but that's all now done. So I could load it up and I just thought, you know what? This just looks so cozy and autumnal out here tonight. So I temporarily loaded up the pathway lights because they're still not properly connected, but this is gonna be such a special space when it's finished. So the reason why I'm just doing a small fire in there now is because I'm essentially bedding in this pizza oven. I don't want the course line to crack so I just slowly warm it up every evening I'll increase the intensity of the fire and then it will just bed it in just like you would with a wood fired stove but they did an incredible job on this they integrated the drawer control on the brickwork out of the front because the actual design of this is just to have the metal flue out we wanted it to look like a little chimney and the guys worked on that for us did an incredible job it looks very smart very discreet so I now have full control with this little lever here Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come out and have a proper good go at sorting out this shed. I'm gonna get inside, feed the dogs, have an evening in front of the fire. As mentioned over the weekend, I spent my time 
organizing and clearing out the shared greenhouse and the loft. I think Lydia ended up vlogging it, so I decided to not get my camera out and I just cracked on because I'm not gonna lie, there was a little bit of an incentive to get down to the pub. So I thought, you know what, you can film this. I'm just gonna crack on, get this done, get myself out. So I did manage to uh, enjoy the football down the local with a few of my friends, which was very nice. And then we had a lovely day on Sunday. We enjoyed a Sunday roast again. We had some friends over. It's the first roast that I'd cooked this year. And again, Lydia was vlogging it, so I thought I'm not gonna duplicate that content. But I thought, now we're completing here. It obviously doesn't look tidy but it's organized. I'm at a position now where everything that's in here will more or less be moving into the new shed. The only thing that I think might go is the goalpost. I've got a football goalpost for uh, when we have like little summer barbecues. My friends always like to get the goal up, but I know that Lydia's not a fan of it. So uh, it didn't really come out last year. So then it begs the question, do we need it? Or could we donate that to like um, a local football team or school or something? So we'll see. But anyway, the majority of this stuff is staying. So I've got some tools at the top. Then over here, I've just got some golf stuff. And again, some golf bags over here on the left. And then these are my gardening tools. Little bits and bobs in there. And then this whole section here is just bee equipment. So you'll see that I've basically got bee suits for any guests that want to come over. And then down at the bottom, I've got all of my bee food and bee equipment and stuff in there as well. And then this has just got a couple of footballs to mess around with when people come over and to uh, practice golf net as you do. And then I've got my steel stuff on the wall up here and then my spare beehive equipment, which will be out next year. I might get around to decorating that at some point before they go out in spring. I think Lydia wants these to be decorated with green roofs, potentially in white. I'm not completely sold on that yet. I think that they look quite discreet in wood, in the woodland, because they kind of blend in. I don't really want them to stand out like a sore thumb being painted in white. So that's still a, a discussion, but this is a bee toolbox down at the bottom and then we finally got our new lawnmower so I've got rid of my ride on now because the garden's just got too intricate you can even see out there it's just too intricate to uh, ride so I've decided to go for the Hater GTS 56 it's got roller on it so we can get those stripes not been used it's brand spanking new and then we've got our bikes they'll be staying and cleared out all of these trays so they're basically empty now a couple of materials that probably get stored they're just some spares for some of the installs that have happened around the house these lights are going to go but we've just held on for them just until we finish the work just in case they're needed for whatever reason but they're just old lights so the shed is now in a position where it can basically be moved and they can build the new one which is exciting stuff and Lydia's told me that I need to make the new shed look nice inside so I can't just do any like makeshift shelving and make it look how I have here. She wants me to do it properly and design it. So I will be working on that. Looking a lot tidier in here now. We put a fair amount of effort into this on the weekend, gave it a good sweep and rinsed it down. So it's looking nice and tidy. I was a little bit naughty. You're not supposed to prune your lemon trees at this time of the year. That's something that you normally do right at the very back of winter as you're coming into spring. So it wasn't the right time of the year to do it, but we had neglected these so bad. Like you can see this tree here, it almost lost all of its leaves because it just was so dry. Same as the vines. The vines you can prune at this time of year, but not the lemon trees. And we had a lot of bugs and stuff on them. They just weren't looking good at all. So I said to Lids, I'm sure they're gonna be fine. I'm just gonna get rid of all of the stuff that's struggling to try to decrease the energy to areas of these trees that are already on their way out and it can just focus on keeping the good parts alive. That's my logic. They're in the greenhouse. It's not that cold at the moment. Although it's been quite wet recently, we have been getting some nice sunshine spells. And so as long as we come out here and water them and stay on top of them, I'm hoping that we're gonna bring them all back to life. But they're actually looking all right. I particularly like this one. I love the shape of this tree here. I think it looks really nice. Very nicely shaped up, but they are looking a lot tidier out here now and uh, they were looking particularly poorly the other day and again on the table as well try and revive these as best we can greenhouse ticked off the list 
We've also just begun the process of levelling out the lawn. Before we had a drop that used to drop off and then it used to rise back up. So we ended up having like a lot of collected water on the grass here, which created quite a bit of moss and it just was a little bit soggy. So we just struggled with it a bit. So the guys have been basically working today just to re-level this out and create a nicer flow of water. So the drainage is kind of draining off into the woodlands a little bit more efficiently. I'm not actually sure if you've ever seen up in our loft, but here it is. Essentially, this whole floor was just covered in stuff. There's our Christmas decorations over here. And these are just some items that are gonna go into the house or shed in the future. And then at the top there, that's just basically spare materials for projects that are taking place in the house. And we've just kept some extra bits. So this is our loft space. And we had a serious clear out in here. Cause as I said, it was just absolutely carnage all over here on the floor and we've managed to clear all this space. This space is actually asking to be renovated because it already has an apex in it that can just be boarded out. So you don't need to worry about doing anything structural to create space in here. The ceilings are high enough, it drops down, they've supported on a lower level. So if we were to actually just knock through here, create a corridor through that section and then build up in here that would go straight into my upstairs wardrobe which would mean that this room here could be an extension of that so a couple of velux is in there bang bang so we just quite like using it at the moment as a loft space but should we ever want any more room in the house which at the moment we don't this is definitely an option and an opportunity we just need to box the boiler in here make that accessible knock through and we're done and so it begins. A little bit echoey in here, but as you can see, I've now cleared out my wardrobe. Look how clean and tidy it looks. <laughs> so the plan of action, we're gonna be removing the radiator and that's gonna be resituated over on this wall here. We then will be taking the skirtings off and replacing the floor. The floor has arrived. I can't show you at the moment, but that's hardly any of it. I just pulled up a few planks, but we've got a stack of this in the shed ready to be brought in and ready to be laid tomorrow so everybody's been lined up and we're going to be cracking on with this over the next couple of weeks mr kenny ken will be here spraying the wardrobes next weekend so it's all go and this whole section is going to be removed once the radiator's out of the way and then when this is actually removed which will be later on today andy's going to be putting in a shelf made out of some nice solid wood. I'm not sure, we haven't actually finalized what wood yet, but probably be like an oak or something. And then a shelf at the top of a rail. So really looking forward to getting this going. As you can see, the paint colors on the wall, this is the color we're gonna be going for. And I've actually just chucked all of the stuff from my room out into the hallway, which I'm sure makes Lydia very happy. But I've got my fragrance section, sunglasses, jewelry, watches over here. So we are all sorted, ready to get cracking with the room. My first job today is I'm going to look at quickly lifting some of this flooring up just to see how it comes up in my shoe cupboard. So I'm gonna tackle that first and then once we know where we stand with that, it will probably give us a good indication of how easy the job's gonna be over the weekend when me and Tom get busy replacing it. Can tell that I've not been on the tools in a while. <laughs> Proper soft hands. <laughs> the good news is that floor is coming up extremely quickly. So it's a little bit sticky. I'm hoping that it's gonna mean that we've got a good surface to bond the new flooring down onto. That or it'll be the complete opposite. just to give you a little update as to where we're at. So there was a noggin in the middle of the floor. So we've had to take this 
piece of floor up to drill through. It's double joisted and as you can see we've got a rod coming out here. We drilled through the floor and then we've rodded that through again through into this gap just here and then we're going to come through the wall into the loft space. They will be taken back out, we'll reconnect and bring them all the way through and then back out over on this corner. Well, good morning. It's day two in the wardrobe. So yesterday we plumbed in the new location for the radiator. And as you can see, this section now has been cleared. We just need to fill the hole in the wall and that's ready for decoration. My job today is to re remove the rest of the Antico. If you just quickly take a look in here, you'll see there's the pipe work that we had plumbed in. And once this has been removed, we are then going to put some 5.5 mil ply board down on the floor. We'll screw those in and then we are ready to load up the flooring, which I've been bringing up here this morning. So I'm gonna get cracking on removing this floor and I'll show you once I've completed it. Well, just to give you a little bit of an update, we are currently just taking off the skirting boards. You'll see that we've taken the skirting boards along this wall here. I'm gonna be doing the rear wall in a second. The floor is up, it came up pretty easily. I'm not gonna lie, my hands got absolutely battered. I'll take you to the light. It's been so long since I've actually done manual labor like this. My hands have just been getting battered. Got a huge blister on my thumb here, big blister in my palm, and uh, plenty of cuts on both hands. So, oh, very, very soft hands, but we're making good progress and we have ordered the ply which is going to be going down as soon as I get these skirtings up. It's going well so far so we're not quite there yet but making progress. Hopefully Tom will be over later and uh, we can start making a plan of action for getting this wrapped up over the weekend. As you can see, the skirtings have been removed and we are currently just putting a 5.5 mil ply down and we've just fixed down the floor, any areas that were creaking a little bit just to make sure there's a bit more of a solid base foundation to be working off. Tommy Tom, on the job, doing a bit of scribing. Oh, God. <laughs> you can't swear around here, mate, not on this channel. Yeah. As you can see, we now have the ply down in the room. Tom's just left. So the reason why we've put this down is because A, it gives us a nicer surface to work on. B, it will make the floor feel even firmer. Lydia is convinced that it acts as a sound barrier. I'm not as convinced about that, but it certainly is gonna be a nicer space to work in now. And it means that my floor height and Lydia's floor height will be exactly the same. So they'll be married up perfectly. So this is all set, ready to go in the morning. We have removed the door to the shoe cupboard. We've removed the skirtings. We've worked on just raising up the bollard so the floor can be slotted underneath. We need to leave a 10 mil tolerance um, on the floor because it needs to be able to have a little bit of movement. We'll be stuck down directly onto this floor. So a good day. We've uh, made some good progress actually. So it gives us a better shot of getting this floor laid tomorrow, which is promising. Radiator is going to stay in here. We'll just have to move it around. Maybe take it out near the end of the day. There's a lot of stuff coming out of it. We're actually going to get a device installed. I can't remember what they're called. They're like a Magflow or a Maggi. They're like a, a, it's a magnet basically that filters through the heating system and it gets rid of all of this gunk that builds up and uh, you can just clean it out. So the plumber is going to install one of those for us. And 
I'm now going to get myself in the shower because I've not showered all day. I'm in desperate need of a haircut as well. My barber's actually been doing some renovations himself and so I've not been in there for a couple of weeks so I might pop in to see him tomorrow. But I'm actually growing my hair out a little bit. I'm going to style it a little bit longer and uh, have it so it's not so faded. It will keep me a little bit warmer in the winter and I just fancied a change, something a little bit more traditional. I will check back in with you tomorrow where hopefully we'll be seeing the uh, floor go back down. Yeah, this wardrobe kicks in a little bit. Okay. A square with that room over there, so there's no square with that wall and square with both ends. Amazing, mate. So just packing it out. Just gonna get it set out so I can crack on and push off. So here we have it. Here's the new floor. Tommy is not messing around this morning. Not up bright and early on the weekend. <laughs> You're getting no content from me, mate. I know, mate. And uh, so he's just setting up his floor line here. So he's making sure that he's gonna come off square so the floor doesn't look like it's on the wonk. Once he has this bit done, he'll just fly it in really. This is, this is the slower part, getting this right. And the next thing you know, we'll have a new floor. It is a pretty miserable day today, but I'm very happy about it because it means I don't need to water the lawn because mother nature's done it for us. All the gear, mate. I guess there's nothing I can do right at this moment, but soon I'll be passing you planks and glue. Yeah, more up now. Okay. It's quite rustic, isn't it? It's you like it? Anyway. You like it? Yeah, it's very rustic, isn't it? The glue's going down. What are we doing? A six mil or a four mil or a five mil? Three or four mil. Yeah. Well, you really have to put a lot on, yeah? Spread the baby, spread it. Oh yes, a bit of glide in there, like that. Do you want me to put a green jacket on so you can green screen me out? <laughs> I've actually got a green morph suit. And then you can, um, yeah, just like the trousers do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually got a green um, pair of gloves as well. Lovely Tommy. Start watching poetry in motion. <laughs> well, just a little update as to where we're at. I'd say we're just about over halfway. We're just about to work into the shoe cupboard. We've gone through a lot more adhesive than we were told we needed, which I was also flagged by a fitter, that's normally the case. So we're probably gonna go through two and a half of the big tubs and uh, that should have been enough for both Lydia and my room pretty much. So we'll have to order some more of that, but we're just weighing down the side of the floor using <laughs> whatever we have to hand and hopefully we'll have this down by the end of the day and we'll be ready to put the skirtings on. So going good so far. Just spotted that we've got a few butterfly knots in the wood which look absolutely incredible. We've got one over there as well. So we're just trying to uh, naturally integrate them into the floor. There's another one here, but having them too close together. Right, we have now finished laying the floor. So the next phase is to put the skirtings on in the room. Tom is just currently working on clamping the floor together. Squeeze up those gaps. Very happy boy, because he knows he's going home in a second. It's looking good. I think my favorite thing about the floor is the like burn effect. It looks really effective. Looking at the back of the camera, it looks quite harsh, but I know when the walls are decorated in green, and it's gonna be a bit darker in here, a bit moodier in here, and it's furnished. It's gonna look spectacular. So it is indeed, mate. So yes, we are making progress. You are now allowed up here, Lammy. Yes. Well, to the point of this video, this is where we've got up to in the room. So as you can see, the skirtings are back on, and this is all now ready for Ken to come along and decorate. You'll also notice there's some holes in the pillars or the columns. That's because I'm gonna be putting some wall lights on those columns. I'm gonna be putting four on in total. So I just drilled them out in preparation yesterday. So when Ken's decorated, I don't ruin it at a later date. So we are hopefully gonna get some color on by the back end of this week, but it's been a good old journey getting to this point. We're just waiting down the threshold at the moment into the hallway. But that is all we have time for this week. So I hope you did enjoy this video. And as always, I'll be seeing you next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Take care.